5 pool facts you probably didn't know. Number 5. Did you know there are a few blind pro pool players? Okay, not 100% blind, obviously. But apparently Niels Vigen is about 90% blind in one eye, which sounds crazy to me. I mean, I invite you guys to close one eye and try to play. It's freaking difficult. When you only have one functioning eye, your ability to track moving objects is reduced. Same with your ability to judge distance and depth. And I don't have to tell you how critical those things are on a pool table. So I now have even more respect than before for the Terminator. And talking about blind players, there are also a couple of famous colorblind snooker players, which is I guess less handicapping, but does lead to a few mistakes here and there. Like the time Peter Ebden played the brown ball, thinking it was a red ball. Number 4. Have you heard the strange story of Miss Frances Anderson? Somewhere around 1895, a woman named Frances Anderson declared herself the champion woman billiard player and offered $5,000 to any woman that could beat her. And $5,000 back then was a lot of money. It would be worth around 150 k now, so you can imagine she had a lot of contenders. But she still managed to remain undefeated for the next 25 years. During the 1920s, she actually toured North America and Europe, giving exhibitions and beating challengers that were both men and women. And in 1928, when Anderson was 57 years old, and for unknown reasons, she took her own life in her hotel room. A mysterious note was found next to her dead corpse, which said, Do what you will with my body, but don't let the world know my secret. And when they had a closer look at her, that's when they actually discovered the secret that she was talking about. Frances Anderson was a man. The first internationally famous female pool player was actually a man. But what I find particularly weird is that if he didn't want people to find out about his secret, why not dress like a man before killing yourself? Then the story in the newspaper would have been John Doe kills himself. And probably after some time, Frances Anderson, the female pool player, would have been declared as missing. And that's it. I mean, I feel it would have been easy for him to take his secret with him to his grave. Anyway, after some time, they were able to identify the body as Ori Anderson. The story goes that when Ori was about 15 years old, he had a big fight with his family about gambling. And he just ran away and told them they would never hear from him again, never know when or where he died. And that's all we know about him. Nobody really knows why he pretended to be a woman. I mean, if that whole thing was just a hustle, that guy was really committed to it. He kept it going for 40 years. But for me, the best part of this story are the quotes in the newspaper from people who had met Frances Anderson, but somehow didn't know she was a man. She wore a wig and spoke with some effort with a gruff voice. The woman appeared ill and seemed to be suffering from a cough or a cold. I mean, come on, really? 40 years of that and nobody could guess it. <sighs> Number 3. Did you know there once was a 16 years old player with two world titles? Wu Jiaqing, formerly known as Wu Jiaqing, one of the top pro pool players of the past two decades. As I make this video, his Fargo rate places him second in the world, right behind Shane Van Bonin. And I think most pool fans will know that he won a world championship when he was quite young. But personally, I didn't realize just how good he was as a teenager. He won the 2005 World Nine Ball Championship when he was only 16 years of age, which makes him the youngest winner ever. But did you know that the same year he actually also won the 8 ball world championship? Keep in mind that there are only 14 other players to ever win multiple world titles in the whole history of the sport. And he had done it before even turning 17. That is an unbelievable feat that I don't think will ever be replicated. But Wu didn't stop there. For the next 3 years he continued to compete at the highest level despite his young age. In 2006, as a 17 years old, he reached the semi-final at the World Pool Masters and the quarter-final at the 9-ball World Championship while trying to defend his title. In 2007, as an 18 years old, he won the All Japan Championship. 
and in 2008, as a 19 years old, he reached the final of the World 10 Ball Championship, beating Shane Van Boning and Mika Imonen in the process, winning his semi-final while playing with a borrowed cue, and only losing in the final against Darren Appleton on a tight score of 13 to 11. That means he came pretty close to having three world titles in three different divisions before even turning 20 years old. That is scary impressive and he really deserves his nickname of Little Genius. Number two, do you know the origins of the pool lingo? Pool and pool rooms. In the 19th century, a pool room was a betting parlor for horse racing. Billet tables were installed in those rooms so that people could pass time between races. The two became connected in the public mind and now billet is generally called pool and billet rooms are called pool rooms or pool halls. Billet. The term billet is derived from the French language and more specifically from the word bille, which means ball in French. Banks and bank shots side rails and cushions were added to pool tables for the sole purpose of stopping the balls from falling off and because they resembled the banks of a river they were called banks and when players discovered they could aim directly at them to play a new type of shot that's when the term bank shot was born the kitchen and the house in the 19th century people with tables at home would usually not have much space for it so it would be placed in a dining area and would double as a dining table often the dining area was adjacent to the kitchen which means that you'd literally be in the kitchen while taking the break shot also it makes a lot of sense to be breaking away from the kitchen because if the white ball starts flying around there usually are a lot of glass items in the kitchen number one did you know there once was a giant pool hall with over 130 tables? Right now, the largest pool room in America is Q Master Billets in Virginia Beach, which has over 70 pool tables. And I've heard stories of the Lion's Den in Las Vegas, which supposedly had around 100 tables, but it's been closed for a while. And if we look abroad, there is a massive club in Jakarta called Benkel Billet Hall with 123 tables. And again, I've also heard some unverified stories of clubs in Russia and China with supposedly around 100 tables. But the place I'm talking about had a total of 131 pool tables. In 1917, the Sweeney Houston Company opened the Recreation Building in Detroit with an investment of over a million dollars, the equivalent of over 22 million dollars in today's money. About a year before the opening, they posted an ad in the newspaper claiming the place would house 55 billet tables, 39 pocket tables and 12 English billet tables for a total of 106 pool tables. But in October 1917, 10 days after the official opening of the place, another ad ran in the newspaper with the full details of what was actually inside the seven-story building. 131 pool tables, 116 bowling alleys, a cigar store, a barber shop with 20 seats, a restaurant with 200 seats, and the plans to open another restaurant in the basement soon. Around 200 people working there, including 10 table mechanics. On top of all this, one of the tables was placed in a theater area with 300 seats looking down at it. The room was used for daily exhibitions and classes from actual world champions of the game. So yeah, that's a lot. And it's no surprise, the building's motto was eat, smoke, shave, rest and play. I mean, personally, I could see myself living there 